Minecraft has changed a lot in the last few years with a ton of major updates, so in this video I'll explain what each recent update added and how they made Minecraft into the game it is today. Now in my opinion, the first update that really ushered in the modern era of Minecraft was 1.13, the update Aquatic. So let's take a look at the features that this update added. To start, 1.13 added new ocean biomes as well as new blocks. So for example, we have this biome right here which is the frozen ocean, and although pack ice and standard ice are not new. At the bottom of the icebergs here, there are lumps of blue ice which were added in this update. But as well as that, things as basic as seagrass and kelp were not in the game until 1.13. In fact, the bottom of the ocean looked very much like this. Literally nothing. That's right, completely empty, just covered in gravel. It's actually pretty crazy to think how completely bland and boring the ocean was before 1.13. But there was also the incredibly brand new coral reef. Now coral reefs of course generate in warm oceans, but before this there was no different types of oceans, and there wasn't even types of oceans that generated with only sand on the bottom. So all these brand new coral blocks were added to the game, but as well as just having new ocean biomes with new blocks in them, there was also new structures. And these structures were... And these structures were, and still are to an extent, incredibly common. So for example, the shipwreck. We have one right beneath us, and literally right over there is a second one. Of course, shipwrecks were added to generate fairly frequently, to of course simulate and show the fact of pirates. And these actually added a good reason to explore around the ocean. And you can even see in this shipwreck over here. 1.13 also added the ability to even be able to waterlog blocks. And yet, yeah, there's literally a third shipwreck over there too. A little bit later, the shipwrecks were made less common but there is another underwater structure that was also added to the game around this time, and that is the Ocean Ruins. Ocean Ruins did not exist before Minecraft 1.13. And of course inside these as well we have some various items that can be found, and even things like buried treasure chests and buried treasure. There was a lot of really brand new things that were being added to Minecraft around this time. But as well as new structures, there was also brand new mobs, so for instance the Drowned, but also things like Cod, Salmon, and Dolphins. In fact, the only really ocean features that were in the game before 1.13 was the squids, which were literally the only aquatic mob. That is of course outside of the Guardian and Elder Guardian found in the Ocean Monument. And also of course things like turtles, and then the turtle shell helmets and scoots were added in this update. There was additionally some other items you could get from the new mobs, like let's say tridents, which were a very new thing for their time, and definitely one of the most hyped up features of the update aquatic. Commands and a bunch of technical stuff were also changed around a ton, as well as adding puffer fishes into the game, which is probably the most revolutionary thing ever added to Minecraft. Not to forget, of course, the insane amount of variants and interesting types of tropical fish. Anyway, I think we're gonna go on from the update Aquatic to the next major update of the game, and that is 1.14 Village and Pillage. So the first big thing that's important to remember is that this is what villages used to look like. In fact, from when the village structures were first added to the game, all the way up to through 1.13 versions, this is how villages looked inside of Minecraft. Incredibly strange, blocky, as well as the actual villager trade system being very rudimentary. And so that's one of the reasons why 1.14 was so revolutionary, because it took the villages from looking like this, which is what they had looked like forever, into this. Now Minecraft changed a lot in many ways in this update, because the first thing it changed of course is the generation of villages. A couple new village types were added, but every single villager structure was completely overhauled. Old. In fact, even some structures, like let's say the old cobblestone churches, even those, although there's some resemblances, they still look entirely different in the new update. And of course all the houses are different. Looking back on it, a lot of these new villager houses weren't that much different, but at the time it seemed entirely revolutionary and really did change the feel of the game. But of course the biggest thing of all is that the textures changed. Not only did the villages change after all this time, but for the first time ever, Minecraft had a texture update overhaul. And probably for the last time too. And obviously some people prefer certain old textures over new textures, and some people prefer all the old textures over the new textures. And if you want you can always enable those old textures by going to options, then to the resource packs, and having the default programmer art be put into your selected resource packs. But either way this was of course a massive change to the game, and completely made literally 
every single block in the game look different. Now as well as having new village generation inside of this villager generation is a system of villagers having workstations. This meant that villagers were not born into a certain profession, but they could actually pick that profession by connecting themselves to a certain one of these new workstations. Now a couple of these items were things that were already in the game before, like let's say the leather workers cauldrons, but a lot of them were brand new, like the composter or like the smoker, and almost all these workstation blocks were also given functionality. Also certain things that Mojang wanted to add into the game for a long time were finally added, so for instance lecterns. Another thing that was added to the game is a brand new biome. This new biome, the bamboo jungle, first added to the game the new bamboo item. Now bamboo is not insanely useful at this point, but it could be used for fuel, be planted down, and also be crafted into sticks. Now as well as that, of course, we do have the panda mob that was added. Both the bamboo jungle and the panda were added because of a mob vote for Minecraft China edition, actually. But interestingly enough, there was a Minecraft mob vote going on at the same time for all the other Minecraft versions. And that was the Taiga update. The Taiga was voted on by the community to be updated, but a lot of people were fairly unhappy with it, as it didn't actually add very much. Basically just having foxes become part of the game, as well as adding occasional sweet berry bushes around the Taiga and Mega Taiga biomes, and also the campfire item. Now campfires are very cool, along with foxes and berries, but of course this didn't actually change the main generation or really even the look of the Taiga biome, and so to a lot of people it wasn't that good of an update. But either way, that was the Taiga update, and of course the entire villager trading system itself was overhauled with a lot of really great trades being added, as well as the ability to discount trades, and even just swap through trades by just breaking and replacing a villager's workstation. Well, although illagers existed in the game, a new type was added, the pillagers that generated at these pillager outposts. Now, pillager outposts are fairly frequent across the Minecraft world, and inside of them you can find some treasure. Also, rarely, the pillagers would have on them the pillager ominous banner. If you kill one of the pillagers, they have the pillager ominous banner from this point onwards. You would then have the bad omen effect. And if you went inside of a village, a raid would start with this brand new sort of boss fight that was added to the game. Let's go on to a much smaller update though, but still one that affected the game in a couple ways. The Buzzy Bees update. This was a very strange sort of intermediary update that was added to the game to basically add some new content between Minecraft 1.14 and Minecraft 1.16. So in Minecraft 1.15, it basically did two new things. It added the new bee system of mobs into the game, mostly for the purpose of just having there be some sort of a feature, but the whole rest of the update was basically bug fixes, as Minecraft 1.13 and 1.14 had changed the game so fundamentally there needed to be an insane amount of bugs be fixed so that the game could run a lot better, and although by no means it fixed all of them, it definitely changed enough that a lot more players could actually access these new features. But either way, let's talk about what was added. So there's the bee system. Basically, there are beehives that generate around Minecraft and forests, most commonly in the flower forests. And if you right-click on them with a bottle, they will give you honey bottles, which is a food source, also something that cures poison. And if you share them with right-click, then you will get honeycomb. The honey Beehome can be crafted into beehives. Beehives are sort of like the unnatural bee homes that you can make more of, and then the bee nests are the natural ones that are found around the world. Also, in a later iteration of 1.15, if you had a flower next to an oak tree or birch tree sapling and you bone milled it, there is a 5% chance of there being a bee nest on that, which makes them renewable. You can also craft honeycomb into honeycomb blocks, which are quite a beautiful decorational item. And you can also make honey blocks, which kind of work as an alternate variety of slime blocks, and they're insanely useful for redstone and a lot of other cool technical things. There's also interesting things, like because they're sticky, you can't jump on top of them, as you can see. And of course, the bee mob works by pollinating flowers, going back to the hive, filling it up, and then you can harvest it. The only other real major thing that was added to the game outside of bees, though, was the ability for iron golems to crack when they get hurt, instead of just having their health go down invisibly, and then right-clicking on them to heal them with iron iron ingots. This might seem like a small change and it kind of is, but it does mean when iron golems are being used to fight in raids, you can fully heal them, but onto the next major update, which happens to have focused on an entirely different dimension. So this is 1.16, the nether update. 1.16, as you'd assume, only really affected the nether, although there are a couple changes to the overworld as well. Fundamentally, the nether was turned into an 
entirely boring one biome place, also only featuring one structure in it, into an incredibly exciting place full of life and things to do. Buckle up, because this update has a ton in it. To start, we have the ruined portals. These generate in the nether, as well as the overworld. They can have loot in them, and they're basically a non-completed portal that you can sometimes complete if you're lucky, and they contain the brand new crying obsidian block in it, and of course some nethery blocks around them, so if these are found in the overworld, you sort of have some of the nether leaking into the overworld. A nether structure that was added to the nether outside of the nether fortress that was already there is the Bastion. Bastions generate in the game in a couple different variants, and they're made primarily out of the new blackstone blocks. A couple sub-updates for 1.16 later, the piglin brutes were also added to these, which made them much more difficult. They're basically a massive structure made out of blackstone and basalt that contain treasure in them, as well as usually a ton of gold, and some brand new nether items. Also sometimes some really unique stuff, like let's say the magma cube spawners. So this one structure alone definitely added a lot more things to do in the nether. And of course the bastions themselves are primarily inhabited by the piglins. Now the piglins are a new type of mob that were added to the game. And along with the brand new piglin mob also came the piglin bartering system, where piglins will go up to gold ingots, pick them up, and throw you a random item from the list of items that they can give. Some of the ones they can give for example are obsidian, spectral arrows, and ender pearls, nether quartz, string. Now a couple other new mobs were added to the game outside of the piglin and piglin brute. And that is the hoglin found in the crimson forest. Now hoglins are definitely a very interesting mob in the game, bred with crimson fungus, but they also spawn into the game pretty frequently, so there's not too much of a point of breeding or farming them. Hoglins and piglins are natural enemies and will sometimes fight. And the last mob that was added to the nether in 1.16 is the strider. But of course one of the biggest things added to 1.16 is the new biomes. The number of biomes in the nether went from 1 to 5. So originally all there was was nether waste, which wasn't even called that, it was just called the nether. And this biome right here is that, it has glowstone in it and tons of nether rack, but basically other than that is completely barren. But another biome was added and that is the basalt deltas. This biome was supposed to look like a somewhat active volcano, even having things like a Geiger counter sound effect which sort of makes it seem like it's radioactive. This biome was an incredibly beautiful and interesting addition to the game, also being the brand new home of the magma cube. However also added was the soul sand valley. The soul sand valley is an incredibly overpowered biome, as is filled up with nether fossils and contains a ton of ghasts, as well as skeletons. This biome also has some basalt pillars in it. The other two biomes that were added are the two forests, the crimson forest and the warped forest. This is obviously the crimson forest and this is the warped forest. What's the difference? Well the warped forest of course is made out of these new sort of nether trees made out of warped stem. The wood there can't burn and it can't be crafted into boats, but other than that it's about the same as any other wood type except for how you farm it. There's also the twisting vines here, and there are the occasional endermen in this biome. Then inside the crimson forest, it is the major home of the piglins and hoglins, containing the crimson variant of the nether wood. The nether trees can be small like this, or they can be super wide like this, having tons and tons of wood blocks on them. And there also being this interesting new shroom light light source and ways of growing this. And the final thing that was put into the nether update is not really that visible, but it's a new material, netherite. Ancient debris is found pretty rarely in chunks of 2 to 4 underground around Y14 and 15 in the nether. And if you take this basically lava proof material, smelt it and combine it with gold, you get netherite ingots. And netherite ingots can be combined with things to make netherite tools as well as netherite armor. This was also a very major change to the game. As of course before this point, there was no new tool type that had been added to the game since literally diamond tools. There had not been a new tier of tools or armor added to the game for almost 10 years. But on from the nether update to an update that was eventually split into two. So this is 1.17, and in some senses 1.17 is probably one of the weirdest updates that Minecraft ever had. Why? Well because 1.17 actually purposely added into the game things temporarily. What do I mean by that? Well basically here is how it works. Mojang decided to add to Minecraft the Caves and Cliffs update, but it ended up taking too long. There were some issues around 2020 because of obvious reasons, and so because of that they decided to split the update into two. The first half would add all the new blocks and items like let's say the dripstone, 
or the moss blocks, the azalea bushes, powdered snow and other things like that. And so every single block that was going to be added to the Minecraft Caves and Cliffs update was added to the game early in 1.17, but then the actual generation of the Caves and Cliffs update was added in 1.18. But what makes it so strange is that some of those blocks and items were given temporary ways of being obtained in survival. So certain things like the amethyst geodes were added in 1.17, which are of course made out of smooth basalt, then calcite, then the layer of amethyst and budding amethyst. So basically deep slate was added in a strange way, where you could sort of have some deep slate generate near the bottom of the world, and also dripstone was similar. There would be small strange clusters of dripstone around the Minecraft world. They would kind of generate around the side of caves fairly frequently, so you could get some of this item if you wanted. But also something you could do is get moss blocks from treasure chests. So if you found a moss block inside of a shipwreck, you could bone meal that moss block and around there, that would also give you access to the moss carpet, more moss blocks, as well as flowering azalea, and the standard azalea bush. Now in the standard or flowering azalea bush or bone meal, they turn into the large azalea trees, and underneath that there is the root of dirt. And at the root of dirt, you can bone meal the bottom of root of dirt, and that will give you the hanging roots items. And so that's how you're given access to all those lush cave blocks. Or alternatively, a lot of these things could be bought from the wandering traders, like let's say two small drip leaf for an emerald. And what makes 1.17 really cool in a sense too, is that it actually added a lot of different ways that you could get certain items that you couldn't get them before, and also made all those 1.17 items be obtainable in ways that were not just finding them in the overworld. So for example, you could get powdered snow by putting a cauldron out in the snow and waiting for a long time, then picking that powdered snow out of the cauldron with a bucket, and you could then go inside of it and you could have all its uses, like let's say how it freezes you, giving that interesting snowy texture around the side of the screen. But as well as that a new ore type was actually added, and that is the copper ore. Now copper ore still does not have a whole lot of things you can do with it, but it was added to the game at this time, and so although I definitely think that Mojang should absolutely add a lot more uses to this, this is the update that originally added this item to the game. Which is a pretty big deal, since the last ore that was added to the game was the nether gold ore in 1.16. Also, when breaking ore blocks, you would not just be given a sort of silk touch variety of that block, but from that point on, that's when things like raw iron, raw gold, and raw copper were added to the game. These worked basically exactly the same, with the one difference being that Fortune worked on it. This is part of Mojang's big plan to fundamentally make things like iron golem farms be a little bit less completely necessary for Minecraft. As for instance, from this point onwards, then when mining, when you're doing things like iron or gold or copper, you could actually get that benefit from Fortune as well, and get yourself a ton more of these items from your mining explorations. And one other big thing that was added is goats. Now goats generate on top of mountain biomes, but they did not yet have the goat horn at this point. But anyway, on to 1.18, which absolutely revolutionized the generation of the overworld forever, which really changed the entire way that the game works. So of course this is 1.18, also known as Caves and Cliffs Update Part 2. The first thing we're going to talk about is the new biome layout, or also the fact that seeds were completely changed, and I'll show you what I mean. Not counting all the brand new biomes added to the game, or even just the shape of land, just the actual placement of biomes themselves was completely overhauled. To show this off, we're going to go to chunkbase.com and take a look at how worlds change between versions. There's a world in Minecraft 1.17, and as you can see, here, the biomes tend to have sort of diagonal borders to them, and they'll form biome groups, with some forests being like plains and forests and taiga, and also the extreme hills and swamp. Whereas there'd be other smaller groups, it would be the snow biome, or the deserty biomes, or the oceans, or maybe even something rarer like the mega taiga or jungle. But this was changed fundamentally in Minecraft 1.18. So without zooming in at all, we're going to change this to Minecraft 1.18. You'll notice right off the bat, the biomes are way larger. In fact, these biomes are absolutely huge. We have to zoom out really far to see how big they are, but they're much, much bigger than they were in Minecraft 1.17. In fact, every Everything is bigger, even the rivers are. And you can also see, of course, that whole biome layout pattern is fundamentally changed in a lot of different ways. I'm not going to go over all the different overworld generation changes just because of time, but I could definitely do a whole video dedicated just to the generation in Minecraft 1.18 and onwards, as it is so much different than it ever was before, and a lot more complicated. But as a couple major things to look out for, if you notice, the biome borders do tend to be more circular, and also those biome groups aren't quite as defined. So as well as that, of course, the actual shape of the overworld's completely different. In fact, scratch that, just 
Literally everything about the overworld is different, from these beautiful mountain biomes and these massive gorges that lead to small as well as incredibly, incredibly large rivers, beach biomes being completely changed, and if we go underground, of course, we have the cave part of caves and cliffs. The overworld is twice as deep, but if you consider how much higher up terrain can go, it's almost three times as many blocks per chunk, which is absolutely insane. With new cheese, noodle, and spaghetti caves, in combination with the old Carver caves, the Minecraft overworld's been and changed forever. Also the layers where different items are mined at were also completely overhauled, so for instance now the best place to mine diamonds is Y-58 instead of the old thing which was Y-12. There's also of course new biomes underground, like let's say right here we have the dripstone caves. Which can, generate in an a which can generate in absolutely spectacular and beautiful ways, alongside the new Lush Cave biomes, which has the glowberries in it, and also is filled up to the brim with things like axolotls and tropical fish. Although, of course, if players are really wanting the old cave experience, there's still definitely some of the old Carver Caves here, also a lot of things still having the old stone, but most of the overworld is completely different. Now, in terms of new mountain biomes, there are things like the new Stony Peaks, which are the massive mountains that generate inside of warm biomes. Then there are the huge frozen peaks along with jagged peaks, grove, and meadows, and these can generate in a lot of different areas as well, including the powdered snow generation. Sometimes caves will even intersect these to make these absolutely beautiful entrances into different areas inside of the mountains. And here's some of that brand new meadow biome, which is kind of a new mountain biome, kind of a new plains biome, definitely a mix of both, and a thing that's very prevalent in real life, which should have been in the game a long time ago. And here is the Jagged Peaks biome, sort of the most well-known and most beautiful of the new Minecraft 1.18 mountain biomes. This update just changed the Minecraft world so much for the better, it really made it absolutely beautiful, and even changed the total number of combinations that you could have in terms of different generation. But fundamentally, Minecraft did keep a lot of its same feel. And now it's time to go on to the newest released version of Minecraft, that is the Wild Update. This is Minecraft 1.19. It looks pretty similar to 1.18 in a lot of ways, and some people actually refer to 1.19 as Caves and Cliffs Part 3, but its official name is Minecraft 1.19 The Wild Update. Let's take a look at what this update added to Minecraft. The first thing to know about this update is that all its major features are very localized, meaning that in the vast majority of the overworld you're not going to see a different at all between this and 1.18. So the mangrove swamp is sort of the wild feature of the wild update that was added. Now this one new biome actually adds a ton of new things to the game. It generates in about 50% of the places where swamps used to generate. So now all the swamp biomes in Minecraft are 50-50 split between either being a mangrove swamp or basically being exactly how swamps used to generate. The mangrove swamp is a very interesting biome with things like mud blocks, which also of course unlock to us the entire mud family of blocks. Things like mud brick walls, mud brick stairs, mud bricks, packed mud, as well as muddy mangrove roots, and just the base mud block. There is then of course the actual mangrove. The mangrove tree is a rather strange tree made out of mangrove leaves, grown with propagules that grow on the leaves instead of saplings that are obtained by breaking the leaves. And inside of it is this really beautiful crimson colored mangrove log. Also generating inside of the standard and mangrove swamp is the frog. Now frogs, if you have baby versions of the magma cubes, will actually eat those magma cubes and convert them into frog lights. We can see that happen right there. These frogs are walking over to the magma cubes and they're eating them, turning them into pearlescent frog lights. There are three types of frog lights in the game. They are verdant ochre and pearlescent, which are kind of interesting names for those. If you have all three types of lights, you actually get the achievement called with our powers combined. Now these really interesting lights are a beautiful new way of decorating inside the game. When frogs are bred, they'll plant down frog spawn. Frog spawn will give you tadpoles. And tadpoles are a really interesting mob, which is a way of going between frog spawn and frogs, as of course in real life, frogs do not just instantly grow up. Now they function like fishes in most ways, and you can pick up the tadpoles but not the frogs in buckets. Then you can move those frogs into whatever biome you want, and by doing that, decide what type of color of frog they'll grow up as. And there's a couple other things with the mangrove swamp, like for instance, the lily pads still do generate here, you get sort of riverish type generation through here and there is tropical fish that generate inside the water. Onto the other part of the wild update, a bit more dangerous variant of it, found in the completely opposite part of the world. Mojang decided to add a new type of cave biome. This was actually going to be part of the cave update, 
it was eventually backlogged to be part of 1.19. That's one of the reasons why people say that 1.19 is sort of like the Caves and Cliffs update part 3. Anyway, if you're underneath any area of low erosion, more or less meaning a mountain biome or a very tall piece of generation, the cave biomes underneath that are going to be the Deep Dark Biome. The Deep Dark Biome is a dangerous, interesting new biome in the game, but it is completely peaceful mode, and inside of it we have the Skulk Sensors, the Skulk Catalysts, more than just a little bit dangerous Skulk Shrieker, as well as the basically useless Skulk Veins. However, also, we have the brand new generated structure of the ancient city. So if you go around an area of particularly low erosion, you'll eventually run into one of these megalithic structures. They contain a ton of loot, but not too much of it is truly overpowered, although sometimes you will find some enchanted golden apples here, which is pretty good. The Shriekers and Sensors work in concert with each other to basically give you Wardens inside the world. What are the Wardens? Well, they're the protectors of the Deep Dark, as well as ancient ancient cities, but they're more frequently found in ancient cities as they only come from shriekers. When a shrieker shrieks four times, you get a warden. And so because of that, if you're not careful, you will get tons of wardens in your Minecraft world. These things are super deadly and have a lot of unique properties to them. But the most important thing to know is to avoid them as much as you can, definitely running away as soon as you've angered them, as they're basically as quick as the player and much more deadly than them. And the new loot of the Deep Dark Biome added a couple things, like for instance the ability to craft the Recovery Compass and craft the 5 Music Disc from Echo Shards and 5 Music Disc Shards, respectively. It also added the new Swift sneak enchantment, which means you could sneak on the ground and move at almost the same speed as you could by just normally walking, which is definitely a very useful thing to do. And there's two other major things that were added to this update. First thing is goats are now able to drop goat horns. If they ram into a naturally generating block by accident when trying to ram a mob, they can drop one of these horns that have a massive sound radius and are kind of like Minecraft's first instrument. They have all kinds of different sounds to them. In fact, one of them is actually the pillager sound when they're starting a raid which definitely makes all these sounds pretty crazy, and like this one right here is a very evil and very funny sounding sound. And because of the mob vote, there was a new mob added to the game, which is found in Pillager Outposts, as well as the Woodland Mansion, and that is the Allay. The Allay will basically grab items for you that you put into its hand, and that's about it. You can also duplicate the Allay and get more of them by right-clicking on it with an Amethyst Shard when a Jukebox is turned on. And if you're wondering why there isn't more to the 1.19 Wild update, it was originally going to include a Birch Forest update, as well as a heavily hinted on Desert update and Savannah Biome update, but it wasn't added because Mojang decided to make it a smaller update to get it out in time for the summer. Now, I'm definitely not going to go over everything in Minecraft 1.20 as I already have some videos on that, but here's a couple highlights of what we're likely going to see in this next update. First of all, of course, is the brand new camel mob. This mob will definitely add a couple new features to the game, like let's say the camel's dash ability, or the fact that certain hostile mobs cannot actually attack you when you're on top of a camel. But as well as this mob, there's going to be the brand new bamboo wood type, with blocks of bamboo, blocks of strip bamboo, bamboo planks, bamboo mosaic, bamboo stairs and slabs, as well as of course things like doors and trap doors. Mojang's definitely been in the habit of adding new wood types, as for instance in 1.19, of course the new mangrove wood type was added. So that's definitely a big thing that'll add a lot more uses to bamboo in 1.20. There's also going to be the new bamboo raft, with a bamboo raft with chest variant, and of course there is the chest boats already in the game that were also added in 1.19. There's going to be the sniffer that was voted on in Minecraft Live, and the new hanging signs, which are basically just going to be a new variant of sign in Minecraft. And there's also going to be the new bookshelf variant, the chiseled bookshelf. Chiseled bookshelves work nothing like really any other block in the game, and what's so cool is you can place blocks in every single area of them, so you can customizably decide where you want books inside of those chiseled bookshelves. You could technically use this to actually make pixel art if you want, as if you think about it, you have like six pixels per block, and just wherever your little crosshair is, that'll decide where the books are placed in the bookshelves, which definitely makes it a very cool and decorative item that can add a lot of detail and beauty to builds. And there's also going to be the brand new piglin head, and I'm sure a lot more to be added in upcoming snapshots. Anyway, that is every single major recent update in Minecraft explained from 1.13 to 1.20. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe to see more like it, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!